Hi, good morning all, all of you. Good morning, my dear students. Okay, so today, uh, you know, as you all know that tomorrow we are going to write our science examination and it is the last day and you know, it is the fifth session of YouTube live streaming from the team excel my dear students so that is why the reason you know today we are going to discuss one of the most important chapter from biology that is life processes and as you all know that and the weightage of the uh, chapter is nothing but seven marks means each and every line of the textbook each and every word of the textbook matters so that is why the reason today we are going to discuss some important questions. We are going to discuss some important questions from the chapter life processes, my dear students. Okay, so there are some technical issues. That's why the reason we are a little bit delay, my dear students. And that time also we have to utilize maximum. I know that you are all you are all there in the and final lap and the last minute preparation. You know that. So that's why without wasting any second, without wasting any moment, I am directly moving into the topic life processes. Processes. And you know, what do you mean by life processes? You know that as you all know that the processes and that are responsible for maintaining life in living organisms are commonly called what life processes and in multicellular organisms and there are four life processes are the right and what is called what the nutrition something related with the food and the second one respiration something related with the breakdown of food to produce energy that is called respiration and what is the third one transportation and the nutrients and you know the oxygen and the waste materials carbon dioxide all are transported in multicellular organism by a process called what transportation and finally and you know whenever we are doing the chemical reaction inside our body and you know simply we can say that whenever we are having the metabolic reactions are there inside the chemical reactions inside the living organisms are commonly called metabolism right and you know and during the metabolic reactions what will happen my dear student and there will be chance for the production of useful material at the same time and you can see there are some metabolic waste materials are also produced right and that metabolic waste materials are eliminated by a process called what excretion so these are the four life processes. These are the four life processes in multicellular organisms like human being. I will repeat nutrition, respiration, transportation and, and, and excretion. But what about unicellular? And you know here multicellular four. And what about unicellular? Unicellular only three, my dear students. Why only three? Because there is a single cell, right? Amoeba. And you can see the yeast. You can see as well as you can see the uh, paramecium, chlamydomonas. And these are the organism by which they are uh, made up of only one cell. You know that unicellular organism, simple diffusion is enough, my dear students. Whenever they need oxygen and the outside the body, outside the cell, you can see oxygen content is more by simple diffusion and the oxygen is getting in and by simple diffusion carbon dioxide is moving out so that is why what we can say there is no need of any transportation transportation is not required in a unicellular organism so what are they nutrition is there as well as you, uh, nutrition is there respiration is there as well as excretion so that's why in unicellular uh, in unicellular there are three and in multicellular there are four and you know the questions which are related with the, all the four mighty students we can discuss one by one okay and you know uh, myself Anish and I'm going to discuss the biology topic mighty students the live process and you know my friend Ashwin Ram and he's waiting mighty students you know after my session he'll be dealing with uh, one of the important chapter called what acid bases and salts from chemistry and physics chemistry and biology you have to study thoroughly only my dear students and tomorrow morning and you have to go with the hundred percent confidence and explore it my dear students you know and you can write or you can uh, what we can say execute the examination in a very successful manner okay so we are without wasting the time we are moving into the first question and you know if you look at the board you can see it is a diagram based question you know that and the picture is very very familiar to you what is that picture it is related with the topic nutrition you know that nutrition is of two types you know that one is called autotrophic nutrition another one is called heterotrophic nutrition and you know in autotrophic nutrition you study you know the plants are performing a process called what and the photosynthesis you know that and the photosynthesis which organ in a plant that is responsible for photosynthesis as you all know that in a plant you can see there is a kitchen you know that what is the kitchen of the plant the kitchen of the plant is called what leaf you know that leaf is known as the kitchen of the plant why leaf is known as the kitchen of the plant because leaf is the area where photosynthesis take place photosynthesis is a process by which a, a, a 
uh, food is produced my dear children food is produced in a uh, kitchen right and like that you can see the food is produced in leaf right so that's why leaf is known as the kitchen of the plant and inside the leaf you can see when you take a cross section of the leaf you can see these are the parts you can see my children and what is the question in the given tree a ts transverse section of the leaf identify the cells were maximum photosynthesis take place it's an important question right and what is the maximum photosynthesis and as you all know that look at the board my dear students here you can see what is the first region the first region is called a, a cuticle my dear students the first region is called a cuticle and c-u-t-i-c-l-e cuticle means what and the upper area it is very responsible for uh, protecting the leaf you know that and that is what we call a cuticle and what is the second region my dear students that is very very important the second part it is labeled you can see second part here you can see the upper epidermis is there and this is the cell very important actually you know this is a black and white that's why the reason here you do it is purely a green in color you can see and this is what we call a special type of mesophyll cells are there and that is called a palisade mesophyll and that cell is called what palisade and that word is important my dear students tomorrow you are going to write the examination so that's why the upper region and this is the upper cuticle and the, this is the upper cuticle and this is the upper epidermis and after that you can see a region that region is called what palisade mesophyll Okay, palisade mesophyll. And after that, you can see there are some gap. You can see this is what we call what a spongy mesophyll, my dear students. Oh, so all of you keep in your mind in leaf, there are two different types of there are two different types of mesophyll cells are there. One is called a palisade mesophyll, which are tightly packed, and you know, spongy mesophyll, spongy, you know that loosely packed with air spaces, right? And here, you know, this is a spongy mesophyll. Here in between, you can see some air spaces are there because you know the gaseous exchange. Ex take place through stomata you studied right stomata you can see guard cells are there guard cell is having nucleus right chloroplast right and you know surrounded by epidermal cells right and guard cells are closed and guard cells are open and whenever the water enters into the guard cell guard cell will swell and guard cell will open my dear students so here you can see the gaseous exchange look at the board please my dear students here you can see the gaseous exchange and you can see during photosynthesis carbon dioxide is getting in and oxygen is moving out and what about respiration respiration is the process by which oxygen is getting in and carbon dioxide is moving out as well as tomato one more function is there and whenever excess water is produced in plants that excess water is eliminated by the process transpiration and you know this is what we call what so that's why for that exchange my dear student there should be some space inside there should be some vacant space inside the vacant space is called what the air spaces so that's why such regions are located in the lower epidermis so that is why the reason and this is what is this region and the area Look at the board, please. The area, what I marked over here, this is what we call a, a palisade mesophyll. The area where I marked here, it is called what spongy mesophyll. And both are having large number of a chloroplast. Both palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll are rich in a uh, what we can say chloroplast. Chloroplast is the cell organelle. Chloroplast is the organelle. Chloroplast is the cell organelle present in plants that is responsible for photosynthesis, my dear student. So the organ, the leaf, you can see the organelle, the organelle that is chloroplast, which is located in both the spongy mesophyll and palisade mesophyll. So that's why what is the question? And the of uh, where is maximum photosynthesis? This is maximum photosynthesis means what here you know all the answers are paired so that's why you have to select two areas hey otherwise you have to which is the which area is having maximum photosynthesis means what the answer is palisade mesophyll because palisade mesophyll is tightly packed right so that is why the reason whenever you are taking a leaf you can see the upper part of the leaf is a dark right a dark green light and you can see what about the lower part of the leaf the lower part of the leaf is light green hey the upper part is dark green the lower part is light green why the upper part is having a oh, palisade mesophyll mesophyll tightly packed and the lower region is having spongy mesophyll loosely packed so that is why the reason the upper and lower part of the leaves are different in uh, appearance okay so here you can see if the question is if here if it is a single one you can write palisade but here they ask uh, and you can see in pairs you can see so that's why the area two the area three so that's why where is two and three so that's why the answer is b two and three
chance for asking that question related with the photosynthesis you must be thorough with the photosynthesis equation 6 co2 plus 12 h2o in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives c6 h2o6 what is that glucose plus 6 o2 plus 6 h2o that is a chemical equation of photosynthesis the balanced chemical equation of photosynthesis you must study the steps in photosynthesis my dear student absorption of sunlight the first step Absorption of sunlight by chlorophyll is the first step. And what is the second step? NCRT textbook, you know, it is given in three steps, A, B, and C. The first one, absorption of sunlight by chlorophyll. And the second one, the solar energy is converted into a conversion of solar energy into chemical energy and splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen. And what is the last step? Reduction. The last step, reduction of carbon dioxide to form carbohydrate. Which carbohydrate? Glucose. Glucose combined to form starch. And starch is stored in plants. And starch is the internal 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 energy reserve in plants and whenever glucose enter into our body our body can store glucose 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 together called what glycogen and glycogen is the internal energy reserve in animals in humans inside the liver so internal energy reserve in plants that is starch internal energy reserve in animal that is glycogen okay this is what we call what the first question without wasting the time i'm moving into the next one because we have to discuss a lot of questions from the chapter uh live process my dear students i think you can follow what we are discussing and give proper comments my dear students you know and tomorrow you're going to write the exam that's why and you know that much energy is required my dear students and what is the next one it is an activity based question most of the students are concentrating on theory portion, theory portion. They are not concentrating on the materials what are uh, given in the boxes. You can see activities are also very, very important, my dear students. And activity based the questions will be there. Okay, so you know photosynthesis is essential for photo. Uh, sorry, light is essential for photosynthesis, and you know the chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis. You study, you know, uh, one activity is the uh, chlorophyll is essential for uh, photosynthesis. You uh, study, you know, a variegated leaf. Here another example. What is this one? A student was asked to write a stepwise procedure to demonstrate that carbon dioxide is. Uh, here you know they are studying carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis. As you all know that there are four materials are essential for photosynthesis synthesis one is called sunlight other one is called uh, chlorophyll uh, the third one is called carbon dioxide and the last one is called what water my dear students so here you can see the carbon dioxide how can we prove that carbon dioxide is essential look at the board my dear students here you can see there are two pictures are given and what is what a a here you can see they put a watch glass and the watch glass is having a chemical called what koh potassium hydroxide and you know, and what will happen? And it is a bell jar covered with the air using Vaseline. It is well covered with the airtight container. And here, you know, there is no KOH. So what is that activity here in the first one? You can see the KOH and two KOH combines with the carbon dioxide, my dear students. And what will happen to that carbon dioxide? That carbon dioxide combines with the potassium hydroxide, you can see. And it is K2CO3 plus H2O. This is the balanced equation. Whenever you are writing any equation, whenever you are writing any equation in biology as well as in chemistry, you should put it in a box. That is the best method of presenting the equations in examination. Whenever you are asked to uh, write the equations of ozone layer, O2, in presence of uh, UV light, O plus O, and O2 plus O, in presence of UV light, O3, and that equations also you have to put it in a box from the chapter, Our Environment. Because ozone related topics are very, very important for your board examination. And here you can see, so what will happen to carbon dioxide? So carbon dioxide, and here you know carbon dioxide is there, my dear student. And here also carbon dioxide. Bell jar A is having carbon dioxide, bell jar B is having carbon dioxide. But what will happen to the carbon dioxide in bell jar A? The carbon dioxide is absorbed by KOH. The carbon dioxide inside the bell jar is completely absorbed by potassium hydroxide, you can see. So what will happen? The carbon dioxide, which is combining with the, uh, the carbon dioxide, which is combining with the potassium hydroxide to make the equation. The equation is very, very important. Please note it down. Okay, this equation, the potassium hydroxide combines with the carbon dioxide to uh, uh, make, you know, the potassium carbonate. So what will happen to carbon dioxide, my dear student? There is no carbon dioxide inside bell jar A. Oh, it's very, very important, right? And there is no carbon dioxide inside the bell jar A. So if there is no carbon dioxide, what will happen? If there is no carbon dioxide, there is no photosynthesis, right? And there is no photosynthesis means what? And there is no starch test, right? There is no glucose means there is no starch, right? 
right? So that's why here there is no photosynthesis and here there is no carbon dioxide and here carbon dioxide is there, photosynthesis is there, starch dust is there, everything is safe. Okay, so that is my reason. And you know, what is the question? He wrote the following steps. The wrongly uh, worded step is... What is the wrongly worded? And here you can see, both potter plants are kept in dark room for at least three days. In your textbook, it is given 72 hours. And what is the 72 hours and three days? Both are same, right? Both are same, right? Okay, and you know why, why, why here you can see the 72 hours means what? You know, 24 hours plus 24 hours plus 24 hours, that is 72 hours. Okay, so that is why the reason, this is a right statement and we have to uh, write the wrongly, we have to pick out the wrong statement, my dear students. So that's why this is a right statement. So that is why that is not the answer. Both. A starch dust, my dear student. So this is a wrong one. So that's why this is the answer, my dear student. What is the last one? A leaf from both plant is taken to test the presence of starch. That is also correct one. And we are taking one leaf from pot uh, Beljar A, and we are taking one uh, leaf from uh, Beljar B, and we are using the starch dust. And you know which one the starch dust is positive, and the starch dust is positive in Beljar B. The reason is carbon dioxide is present. So carbon dioxide is very essential, right? Hey, carbon dioxide is very essential, right? Carbon dioxide is very essential. Sunlight is very essential. And you can see chlorophyll is very essential. Water is very essential. These are the four materials responsible for photosynthesis. And my dear student, there will be chance for asking another question from this topic. Not there here in the material, you know. And you know, Qatar, you can see the, uh, the question paper uh, for abroad, you can see that is something different from the question paper in the uh, Indian regions. So that is why there, is, there may be chance for asking a question. And what is the speciality of photosynthesis in desert plants? In desert plants, what is the speciality, my dear student? The plants like cactus or something, the desert plants, what will happen? It is not possible to open the stomata during daytime. Why? Because you know the evaporation, the transpiration rate is very high during the daytime because the temperature is very high in desert during daytime, right? So that is why the reason what will happen? The stomata are closed. The stomata are closed during daytime and the nighttime, the stomata are open, carbon dioxide is getting in and carbon dioxide is converted into an intermediate product called malic acid and that malic acid in the next day, the malic acid is again returning back into carbon dioxide and performing the photosynthesis. What a mechanism, what an adaptation, what an amazing natural creation, my dear students. So each and every living organism is well adapted. Each and every living organism is well adapted to its environment and the last day we studied what is that word called what nish n i c h e nish so nish is the habitat by which an organism is living as well as the surrounding as well as their habitat together called what nish n i c h e so this is among the four only one statement is wrongly worded that's why that is c that's why c is the correct answer okay moving into the next question this is also related with the nutrition, but it's an easy question. And you know, without wasting the time, we can directly move into the question. The length of small intestine. Hey, you know, we are all having small intestine, right? And you know, the human small intestine is almost uh, six meter in length, you can see. Okay, so that's why, uh, my dear students, you know, just we are going for a very, very, very short break.
ओके और माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड हियर यू कैन से माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड विद द ह्यूमन न्यूट्रिशन यू नो द ऑटोट्रोफिक न्यूट्रिशन दैट वी ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड एंड वी आर मूविंग इनटू द हेटरोट्रोफिक न्यूट्रिशन एंड हेटरोट्रोफिक न्यूट्रिशन देयर आर थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ हेटरोट्रोफिक न्यूट्रिशंस वी हैव टू स्टडी अंडर बायोलॉजी अंडर लाइफ प्रोसेस माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वन इज कॉल्ड द होलोसोइक न्यूट्रिशन एंड बाय व्हिच वी आर ऑल परफॉर्मिंग होलोसोइक न्यूट्रिशन बाय व्हिच वी आर हैविंग इंजेक्शन डाइजेशन अब्जॉर्प्शन असिमिलेशन एंड डाइजेशन एंड देयर इज अ सेकंड वन इज कॉल्ड सेप्रोट्रोफिक nutrition by which you can see the fungi and you know, the mushroom you know what is that they are releasing enzymes to outside and you know in the externally you can see the food is digested and the materials are taken there's a special type of digestion from the dead and decay material that is called a saprotrophic nutrition and one more thing is there now and that parasitic nutrition right what do you mean by parasitic nutrition and free accommodation and free food right an organism is living on the body of another organism and taking the nutrients right and free accommodation and free food A plant is your cascuta, my dear student. A cascuta is living on another plant, and you know accommodation is free, food is free, and finally the plant is get completely damaged. And you know in our body you can see there are different different types of endoparasites are there inside the body, and there are different types of ectoparasites are there outside the body. Parasitism, but you know in your textbook you can see the detailed version is given for holozoic nutrition. And you know holozoic nutrition. Here you can see there is a question: human uh, small intestine, six meter length, large number of finger like projection. What are those finger like projection? You know what? You know whenever you are taking a piece of food, you know what are the complex reactions that are taking place inside the body, my dear students? It's an amazing creation, my dear students. When the food is passing through alimentary canal, the alimentary canal is having a special type of rhythmic movement, right? I think all of you are there. All of you are remembering that. Word because chance for asking that question on tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow the March second, my dear students, and you know you are going to write your science examination. Peristaltic movement, right? The peristaltic movement. Peristaltic movement is the movement by which you can see the food is moving forward. When we are vomiting only, the reverse peristalsis take place. Whenever we are vomiting only, the reverse peristalsis take place. So all together, my dear students, you can see that is what we call what here. You can see the peristalsis, and you know our small intestine. The length is six meter. The food is passing through the a small intestine. Only absorption, absorption is the major function of villi, and you know it can increase the surface area. But you know one more important problem. What is that? A herbivorous animal, herbivorous animal, zebra, deer, elephant, giraffe. These are all herbivorous animals, right? They are eating the plants, right? They are eating the plants and Plant products, right? And you know, and they have to digest cellulose, right? So that's why their small intestine is very, 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 very longer. What about a carnivorous animal, tiger, cheetah, leopard, lion? And these are the organisms. They are called carnivorous animal. Carnivorous animal. They are not eating any plant products, and they are eating the animal meat. You can see, no. And the animal uh, means what? Animal body means what? No cellulose. Easy to digest, right? Easy to digest, right? So their uh, small intestine is shorter. So tiger is having a short small intestine, while the zebra is having a long. long small intestine the reason the type of food they are consuming the type of food they are consuming the length of the small intestine in a deer and in the length of small intestine of a tiger two organisms are given one is called a deer other one is called a tiger one is a herbivorous animal other one is a carnivorous animal and what is that that length is what is the reason they are asking the scientific reason What were the things you are seeing in the world? There will be a scientific reason, my dear students. Whenever you are watching the environment, you can see everything. There is a scientific, scientific reason. And now you are learning science, right? What is science actually? You are searching the truth, my dear student. You are searching the secret of the uh, uh, world, my dear student. That is what we call science. So here you can see it is a mode of intake. No, my dear student, mode of intake is not related with the intestine. It is not the it is not the mode of intake. What about the type of food that matters? The type of food, my dear students, you know one one organism, the deer, the herbivorous organism is taking plants. Plants are made up of cell wall. Cell wall is having cellulose. Cellulose is very difficult to digest. And what about tiger? Tiger is eating meat. Meat is a product of animal. Animal is not having cell wall, not having cellulose, easy to digest. So that's why the answer is type of food. Presence or absence of villi? No. Presence or absence of digestive enzyme? No, my dear students. The type of food, the cell wall, cellulose, cellulose, cellulose. Clear, right? Clear, right? 
moving into the next question so nutrition is over my dear students we are moving into the next uh, the second uh, one what is the second one what is the second life process the second life process is called what respiration so after the questions from nutrition we are moving into the respiration what is this picture you are very we are very familiar with the picture you can see what is that our chest cavity our chest cavity my dear students so our respiration what is respiration actually after taking glucose you can see glucose is broken down into pyruvate you studied right and you know that we will discuss later and here you can see which of the following statements are correct and they are asking which of the statements are correct and some question which of the questions are which of the statements are wrong and here the question is which of the statements are correct so you know first of all you have to read the question thoroughly sometimes you can see they are asking pick out the wrong statement and some questions they are given pick out the right statement so if you are not thorough with the question you know the remaining everything will be in vain so that is why the reason the first one pick out the correct statement in reference to the role of a role of a what is a you look at the picture my dear students what is this one and this is what we on the top you can see it is not a and it is the sound box and i am standing in front of you and delivering my speech means what and that is using my larynx you can see using my sound box you can see and that is what we call what larynx and after that a very long structure is there that is called a trachea the windpipe and that is dividing into bronchi and this is your left uh, this is your right lung and this is your left lung in between heart is also located this is our chest cavity this is our chest cavity by which you can see we are breathing in and breathing out but what is the structure they are asking for here and in the bottom you can see there is an arch shaped structure and look at my body not the board look at my body my dear student this is my uh, right lung this is my left lung but here you can see an arch shaped structure is there in between what is that arch shaped structure first of all you have to identify that one that arch shaped structure is called uh, diaphragm the arch shaped structure is called a diaphragm in diaphragm the letter g is silent my dear student this is called a diaphragm and the question is what is the function of diaphragm so look at both there are four statements are given after that you have to write where which one is correct okay so that's one by one it helps to decrease the residual volume what do you mean by residual volume residual volume means what my dear students as you all know that residual volume there is chance for asking another question what is residual volume residual volume is the volume of air that always that always remaining in our lungs and that is responsible for the exchange of gases right okay so every time whenever you are sleeping whenever you are learning whenever you are attending the examination whenever you are dancing or running in all the time you can see your body is undergoing a process called what you can see exchange of gases whenever exchange of gases is stopped you can see and that means death so that is why the reason you can see exchange of gas is very very important right and for that exchange of gases always some quantity of air is there always some quantity of air is remaining in our lungs my dear student it is more than one liter more than one liter of air is always there in our lungs my dear student that is called rv the residual volume and here you can see and you know the R rv is not reduced so that's why this is a wrong statement rv is there in our lungs my dear student diaphragm cannot do anything with that so that's why that's a wrong statement it flattens as we inhale hey this is an arch shaped structure when we inhale when we breathe in it become ah uh, it moves down and become flat and this is a right statement right it flattens it moves down and become flat when we are inhaling and it comes to the normal arch shaped dome shaped structure when we exhale but here the question is inhale it gets raised it gets raised as we inhale that is wrong it gets raised as we exhale. exhale is correct because when we are exhaling what will happen the diaphragm is raising up my dear students so that's why this statement is wrong it helps the chest cavity to become larger the diaphragm is responsible for increasing the size of the chest cavity and my dear students you know my chest cavity i can increase the size of my chest cavity using the ribs and diaphragm okay you know that an athlete and athlete you know the usain bolt the world record sprinter you can see 9.58 second he completed 100 meter race and you know he is having the capacity to uh, expand his chest cavity because that much quantity of energy that much quantity of energy is required for his performance
So here you can see it helps the chest cavity to become larger. So that's why the second statement and fourth statements are correct means what? A is the right answer. Second and fourth statements are correct, my dear students. She will question the mechanism of breathing. Mechanism of breathing, sure question, my dear students, please. Okay, so I hope it is clear, my dear students, without wasting the time, I'm moving into the next question. So this is not an MCQ type question. It is something, a descriptive one at the same time. It is very, very, very important. Frequently asking question, my dear students, and I want to write something. So that's why all of you are ready for write, copying into your notebook, my dear students. Once you are practicing more and more, and you know everything will be remembered on the proper time on tomorrow, my dear students. And tomorrow, just 24 hours, my dear students. And you know that is why you know it's very, very important. Each and every second, each and every moment is important my dear students what is that give the schematic representation of different pathways hey different different pathways are there no and glucose how many pathways you studied my dear students and the glucose there are uh, three different pathways look at the board my dear students is important you know glucose what is the chemical formula of glucose you studied it's a carbohydrate it's a six carbon compound you can see it's c6h2lo6 and you know for the time i'm writing six carbon compound what will happen glucose in the absence of oxygen they undergo a process called uh, glycolysis and what is not there in the textbook but you have to write something extra that is glycolysis and you know what will happen that process take place in cytoplasm to make uh, two molecules of pyruvate i think you are thorough with the equations my dear students Okay, so glucose in present, look at the board please, glucose in a cytoplasm in the absence of oxygen undergoes glycolysis to make two molecules of pyruvate, pyruvate is a three carbon compound and here you can see the pyruvate you can see how many equations and there are three equations what are the three equations and first one in the presence of oxygen in mitochondria what will happen my dear it is called a krebs cycle that's very important here you can see carbon dioxide water and energy my dear students and whatever the quantity of energy and as you all know that whenever energy is produced in mitochondria mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell and whenever energy is produced energy must be stored right that energy is stored in the form of energy stored in the form of ATP almost 36 ATP molecules are produced by respiration my dear student 36 ATP and here you can see the same thing you studied right whenever we are doing heavy exercise whenever we are doing strenuous exercise whenever we are doing heavy exercise what will happen our muscle cells our muscle cells are lacking oxygen my dear students lacking oxygen Hey, whenever you are doing heavy exercise, which part of your body is working very hard? That is muscles, your skeletal muscles. And the skeletal muscles are not getting a sufficient quantity of oxygen means what? Instead of the aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration take place. And there is an acid produced, my dear student. And that acid is called what? Lactic acid. It is a three carbon compound along with the energy. But the energy is only two ATP. That is why the reason, my dear student, after doing heavy exercise, we are tired because the amount of energy is very 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 less compared to aerobic respiration aerobic respiration 36 atp molecules are produced but anaerobic respiration lactic acid means what only 2 atp means what and we are tired at the same time the muscles are having a pain right and muscle cramps right so that's why the reason after running sometime we are resting in one side and rubbing over that area and that is what we call muscle cramps due to the deficiency of oxygen in the muscle cell a sure short question for tomorrow lactic acid muscle cramps Okay, and but at the same time, you can see one more process I want to give you, my dear students. That is why, what is the last one? You can see there is one unicellular organism we are very familiar with. That is yeast, you know. Yeast, you can see. Yeast, in the absence of oxygen, they undergo a process called fermentation. Fermentation is a process by which uh, ethanol, what is ethanol you can see C2, H5, OH, the ethanol, the ethyl alcohol, a two carbon compound is produced. So here you know the three carbon compound, a two carbon compound means what? Along with the carbon dioxide is also produced, then only the that equation is balanced, my dear students. Here also it is anaerobic respiration, so that's why it is two ATP produced. So yeast can make an alcohol called ethyl alcohol, ethanol, a two carbon compound, C2H5OH, along with the carbon dioxide. And this is these are the three equations. If you write these three equations, definitely you will get full mark. 
sure shot question either all the three pathways or any one of the pathway or two of the pathways so that's why you have to practice this uh, question my dear by writing writing by writing when you're looking, you are thinking that you are safe and you, you are having that confidence. No, my dear student, that is not enough. By practice, practice, practice makes you perfect, my dear students. Okay, and moving into the next question, this is very, very important. And that equations are very, very important. Moving into the next question. Oh, again, an activity-based question, right? Look at the board, my dear students. What is that activity-based question? A student set up an apparatus as shown in figure. Hey, there is a there is a question is there sir, that is also related with respiration my dear student and it you can connect it to with the uh, uh, what we can say you know uh, look at the board my dear students here you can see uh, a conical flask is there just near a beaker is there and a conical flask and a beaker both are connected by a pipe you can see and here you can see the germination of seed you said you know a seed is germinating under the chapter how do organisms reproduce you studied a seed when when uh, during germination a seed is developing a plumule which is to the top a radical which is moving down the plumule is the future shoot system the radical is the future root system anyway you can see seed germination means what seed is respiring seed is breathing seed is taking oxygen from the uh, surrounding and they are releasing carbon dioxide that is very very important my dear student a germinating seed means what a living organism a living component a living component must respire must respire means what will happen oxygen is taken from the surrounding surrounding means what it is an airtight container so that's why the oxygen which is available inside the conical flask is taken and you know what will release you know they are releasing carbon dioxide that is what we are doing i am taking oxygen from the room and i am releasing carbon dioxide that is what we call the respiration right here also the germinating seed is also taking oxygen and they're releasing carbon dioxide and you know one gas is replaced by another one then what is the thing and but you know what is the thing here you can see oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide and here you can see uh, as he like explained the reason here you can see look at the board my dear students here you can see what is a small test tube you know where is that small test tube and the small test tube is having a material called what koh what is potassium hydroxide and what is the function of potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide can we discuss right potassium hydroxide can absorb carbon dioxide potassium hydroxide can absorb carbon dioxide what is the equation 2 koh plus co2 gives k2 co3 plus h2o the same equation we studied no in nutri uh, nutrition chapter nutrition topic itself so what will happen here inside the conical flask a vacuum is created because you can see the carbon dioxide is absorbed the carbon dioxide which is released by the respiration of uh, what we can say the seeds the germinating seeds the carbon dioxide is absorbed a vacuum is produced when vacuum is produced what will happen here you can see the one end of the pipe is there in the conical flask the other end the oh, other end of the pipe is immersed in water means what whenever a vacuum is produced the air is moving from the tube into the flask means what the water level rises my dear student look at the board the water level water level is rising my dear student that is the uh, observation of that experiment so that proves that germinating seed can germinating seed can uh, take oxygen and release carbon dioxide there will be a chance for such questions too okay moving into the next one moving into the next one my dear students so that's about that's about the respiration topic my dear students what is our chapter name life processes you know in life processes you know that there are four life processes the two life process we already completed what are the two life process we completed one is called nutrition and other one is called what respiration what is the third one as you all know that one of the most important one of the most difficult one that is something but transportation my dear student transportation and transportation human being is more important and in my body there are two different types of body fluids are there one is called blood other one is called lymph you can see the blood is pumping from one area to another area by a pumping organ is there in my body what is my pumping organ my pumping organ is my heart to my dear student it's a fourth chamber i am warm blooded all mammals are warm blooded all birds are warm blooded my dear students while you can see the reptiles and amphibians they are three chambered heart they are cold blooded organism my dear student and you know here you know there are some questions related with the transportation transportation in animals my dear students and we have to write all the five one by one are you ready my dear students are you ready the first question and blood vessel that carries blood towards heart 
any type of blood vessel that carries any type of blood vessels that carries blood towards heart and before that look at the board my dear students here all of you look at the board here you can see whenever we are drawing the diagram of heart you can see there are two chambers are there on the top and this is called la the left atrium and this is called ra the right atrium the left atrium and right atrium and just on the uh, bottom you can see the left atrium you can see the left ventricle and here you can see the right ventricle you can see so our heart is four chambered and here all of you look at the board my dear students here you can see the oxygenated blood is coming oxygenated blood what do you mean by oxygenated blood blood with oxygen blood with oxygen and you know blood with oxygen is possible only from lungs right because lungs are the uh, lungs are the suppliers of oxygen in our body whatever the uh, air we are taking that air is there in the lungs and you know from that mixture of air we are taking oxygen only right so that's why and the log oxygen oxygenated blood is coming this channel is very very important this channel is called uh, pulmonary veins Sure question, pulmonary veins and it is carrying blood towards heart. And you know, you keep in your mind, my dear student, all veins are carrying blood towards heart. And what is artery? What is artery? Artery is just opposite, my dear student. Artery is the blood vessel by which they are carrying blood away from heart. One is towards, other one is away. So look at the board, my dear student, and the blood is coming into the left ventricle, and after that, this is the channel. You can see, is it artery or vein? Is it moving towards the heart, or it is moving away from heart? This is the aorta. This is the artery, my dear students. So, blood vessels that are carrying the blood towards heart is called vein. Away from heart is called what? Artery. Away. A-W-A-Y. Away. A-R-T-E-R-Y. Artery. A-A. Away artery. Away artery. That word always you keep in your mind. And here you can see this is the left side. And what is the right side you can see? The right side you know. Here you can see this is the inferior vena cava you studied. Inferior vena cava, the part of vein that carries deoxygenated blood. Superior vena cava, and here you can see finally pulmonary artery. This is just giving an idea about what are the blood vessels that are connected to the heart. What is the question? What is the question? Blood vessel that carries blood towards, towards the heart. And the answer is vein. They didn't ask anything about, they didn't ask anything about oxygenated blood. They didn't ask anything about deoxygenated blood. So that's why, towards vein, away, yay, away, artery. But here the question is towards, so that's why vein. Okay, and what is the next one? The type of heart to transport only deoxygenated blood. Oh, oh, oh. That's an important question. Human heart can transport, human heart can transport oxygenated blood as well as deoxygenated blood. Confused? Hey, look at the board. Here, you know, the green color one oxygenated, the black color one deoxygenated. So, our heart can carry both oxygenated and deoxygenated. So, that's why, and that is not the answer. Hey, because human heart can carry both. The type of heart that transport only deoxygenated, only deoxygenated blood. And you know, it is the heart of, I think all of you can give me the answer, my dear student. It is the heart of fish. All fishes are having two chambered heart. We are having four chambered heart. And the two chambered heart means what? Only one type of blood is moving. Which type of blood is moving? That is deoxygenated. Sure question. And we are having double circulation. But they are having only, only, only single circulation that you studied already. Okay. And here one valve is there. What is the valve? The valve between right atrium and uh, right ventricle. This is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle, my dear students. And you know, what is the valve? Here, all of you look at the board, my dear students. Here a valve is there. And here also one valve is there. And when I am drawing the valve, you notice that. And the two valves are not same. It is different. Here, you know, I draw only two lines, right? I draw only two lines, right? And here one, a two, three. So a difference is there. In left side, only two two and right side three so that's why, what is the name here you can see three right so that's why tricuspid tri means three cuspid means leaf like structure tricuspid and here and you know if it is tricuspid you can easily give me the second one what is that hey if it is three try if it is two oh what is that it is called bicuspid my dear students and here what which question they asked here they asked about between right atrium and right ventricle 
the question I included my dear student. So that's why the answer is tricuspid. And for tomorrow's exam, there will be chance for what is the valve between L A and L V, light uh, means uh, left atrium and left ventricle, and that is what we call what bicuspid. So you should be familiarized with the two types of valves present in heart. One is called bicuspid, other one is called a tri. Bi in the left side, tri in the right side. Bi, tri, left, right. I think it is clear. Okay, moving into the next one. So that's why valve between that is tricuspid. Right atrium, tri. Body fluid that can absorb fat. So whenever there is a question, absorption means what? Always a word is coming into your body that is blood, blood, blood. Blood can absorb, blood can absorb, blood can absorb. But my dear students, you know, you know, if all materials are absorbed by blood, blood is hectic, right? Overload, right? Overburden, right? You are not supposed to give overburden to any part of your body. If you give overburden to any part of your body, that part will be in trouble, trouble, trouble. That's why what the lymph, ah, a material, another body fluid, you know, and that another body fluid is called what? Lymph, the friend of blood, right? And blood and lymph are the two body fluids, right? Lymph is absorbing carbohydrate. Lymph is absorbing proteins. Lymph is absorbing water. Lymph, uh, sorry, the blood is absorbing all the other material. Uh, the water, the carbohydrates, the protein, all are absorbed by blood. So the lymph is telling, I will absorb fat. Hey, a helping hand, right? A helping hand, right? And you know, blood is doing all the functions means what? Lymph is telling, you are my friend, right? So that's why I will absorb one material. Which one? Fat. So that's why fat is not absorbed by blood. Fat is absorbed by lymph. A sure question, which material can be absorbed by your lymph? It is fat, fat, fat. Clear, clear, clear. Okay, moving into the last one, you know, blood cells, my dear students, you know, you already studied, you know, the human blood is having three different type of cells you studied, right? RBC, WBC, platelets. RBC for the transportation of gases, WBC for immunity. What is immunity? That are three years back, three years back, you can see the four years back, we were completely locked down in, uh, in COVID-19 pandemic, my dear students. That time you can see, still we are alive. Why? Because our immunity is that much powerful. Immunity, which cell? WBC, the soldiers in our body. But the question is not WBC, blood vessel, blood vessel, blood cells that are responsible for blood clotting. Whenever there is a bleeding, whenever there is an injury, whenever there is a wound, my dear student, bleeding take place in our body, right? And when the bleeding is continued, what will happen? That is leading into the death of the person by decreasing the blood pressure. So that's why whenever bleeding occurs, that moment itself, the bleeding must be stopped, stopped. How can we stop our bleeding? How can we clot our bleeding, my dear student? It is possible. That moment you can see the hero is coming, my dear student. Who is that hero? It is blood platelets. What is the word? Blood platelets. Keep in your mind, my dear students, you know, the blood platelets are the hero. And whenever there is an injury, whenever there is a wound, you can see blood platelets are coming into that area and they start producing so many factors. Finally, the blood is clotting, undergoing a process called clotting. So name the following, that type of MCQ type questions are also important. Without wasting the time, I'm moving into the next question. Here you can see, my dear students, here, you know, observe the following. It's an easy question, right? And, you know, from the diagram, itself, it's very clear that, what is that? It is the transportation in plants. There are two different types of transportation is there in plants. One is called, what? The xylem transportation. Other one is called, what? Phloem transportation. Xylem can transport water and minerals. In the picture, you can see, this is the root, right? And what is this one? Water, right? And water is moving. Look at the board, please. Water is moving. Water is moving. Water is moving. Water is entering into the kitchen of the plant. What is the kitchen of the plant? Leaf is known as the kitchen of the plant. Water is required in kitchen, right? To prepare food, right? So that's why the leaf is eliminating, eliminating the water vapor by a process called what? Transpiration. You already studied. Transpiration is a process by which excess water is eliminated through stomata from the leaf. That is called what? Transpiration. But you know, what is the purpose of transpiration? What is the purpose of transpiration, my dear students? You know, to make the body, to make the plant body cool. Whenever the plant body is hot what will happen and you know and you know just like you know now my body is very hot 
and you can see my body temperature is very high that's why the reason you can see sweating taking place why my body is sweating why my body is sweating my dear student to make my body cool off to make my body cool off my body is producing sweating sweating like that you can see the plants when the plants body is hot my dear student the plants body will release excess water and the process is called what transpiration and that transpiration is responsible for the uplift of water transpiration pull the suction pressure we discussed right what is that whenever the water is eliminated the excess water is taken my dear student you study you know how can you take a juice using a straw hey how can you take a juice using a straw first of all you are putting that a straw fully immersed in the juice after that you are sucking it when you suck automatically what do you have? first of all the air is entering right first of all you are not getting the juice right first of all air is entering when you take the air there is a vacuum is produced and that vacuum is filled with the juice and the very next moment you are getting the juice right Hey, first you are getting the air, then you are getting the juice, right? The same mechanism is happening in plants during transpiration pull. The word is important. Transpiration pull. P-U-L-L. -L, pull, pull, pull. What is the question? What is the question? Identify the process they are asking. What is the process? Is it evaporation? No. Is it transpiration? Yes. Transpiration. And all other answers are wrong. Transpiration creates a suction force which pulls water inside the plant, pulls transpiration pull. Simple question, my dear students. Moving into the next one. Define translocation. A single line question. Translocation. You are not supposed to confuse transpiration and translocation. That's why I put these two questions together. What is translocation? As you all know that translocation is the transportation. If you don't know, please copy along with me, my dear student. It is the transportation of food. Translocation is the transportation of food, my dear students. Food and other substances. All of you, please copy the same sentence, my dear student. And translocation is the process of transportation of food and other substances from from generally from leaf to other parts of the plant other parts of the plant other parts of the plant through that is very modern the last word is very modern through phloem it is not xylem it is phloem this is the definition of definition of translocation what is the definition of translocation transportation of food and other substances from leaf to other parts through, 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 phloem. Xylem can transport water. Phloem can transport food. Phloem food, fa, fa, phloem food. Okay, transportation of water and minerals by xylem and food by phloem. Translocation, important question by the students. Moving into the next one. The figure given below shows a schematic plan of blood circulation in humans with that, di that diagram we discussed, right? Hey, pulmonary vein, pulmonary artery, aorta, vena cover. So, he, you can easily, which is the first one? This is the pulmonary vein. Hey, pulmonary vein. You know, you can see in the diagram, you can see two colors. You can see white, two colors. Because you know the left side is oxygenated blood. This is oxygenated, and the right side deoxygenated with oxygen, without oxygen, without oxygen, deoxygenated without oxygen, dehydration without water, D E. So that's why deoxygenated blood. Here you can see pulmonary vein. What is this one? This is aorta. What is this one? This is the pulmonary artery. This is the vena cava. Before moving into the option, you should find out the marking. Then only you can move to the one pulmonary vein. Hi, one pulmonary vein, right answer. But takes impure blood. Wrong. Takes pure blood. Second one, pulmonary artery. That itself is wrong. Third one, aorta. Where is third one? Uh, one, two. This is the third one, aorta. No, my dear student. What is the last one? Fourth one, vena cava. Right answer. Fourth one, vena cava. Takes blood from body parts to the right atrium. That is correct, my dear student. So that's why the fourth one is correct. Second last question. Okay, so you know, listen here, you know, in the given diagram, uh, A, B, C and D respectively. So we completed transportation. We are moving into the last life processes. Again, how many life processes are there in living organism? Four, three we completed and we are there in the last life process that is called excretion. 
and my dear students as you all know that every day every second every moment you know our body is producing waste if the waste is accumulated in our body and that is causing uremia that is causing lot of issues even the kidney failure the renal failure and we have to go for dialysis or kidney transplantation all are very difficult my dear students so that's why you know you are not supposed to give extra burden to our kidneys you are not supposed to give extra burden to any of the organs and here you can see the human uh, uh, what we can say the excretory system what about this a it is the right kidney hey what is this one this is the left kidney right this is the right kidney and this is the aorta and uh, here you can see this is the ureter you can see and this is the urinary bladder a is the left kidney no a is the left kidney no so you know a is the right kidney b is the aorta where is b b is aorta c is the ureter and d is the urethra d is not the urethra d is the urinary bladder d is the urinary bladder a is the right kidney and b vena cava there are two different types of blood vessels are there one is called vena cava other one is aorta aorta my dear students here this type of shape that is aorta and you know in the back side of the aorta vena cava my dear students okay this picture is there exactly in the textbook you just you can refer that to one my dear students moving into the last question what is this can you identify what is this my dear students i already told no in some people you can see whenever uh, they are renal failure whenever they are in trouble with their kidney function the doctor is telling do proper hemodialysis and you know the patient a uh, patient is there and from the patient you can see the impure blood is taken and look at the board you know that impure blood is moving into a special type of dev device called the artificial kidney the hemodialyzer in that hemodialyzer you can see uh, you can see a hemodialyzing fluid you can see when the blood is the red color when the blood is passing through that area the waste material urea the waste material all the waste materials are taken and after that the pure blood impure blood is coming and after the purification the pure blood is returning back to the patient impure blood is taken after processing after filtering artificially it is returning back to the patient and this is what we call what hemodialyzer the kidney and here you can see a semi permeable what is the word semi permeable uh, material is there what is that to maintain so what is the function of that semi permeable membrane here is the semi permeable membrane my dear students to maintain osmotic pressure of the blood no no need to maintain any osmotic pressure what is the next word to fill to filter nitrogenous phase from the dialyzing solution hey dialyzing solution is not having any nitrogenous waste because if dialyzer is having nitrogenous waste nothing is absorbed so that's why that is also wrong in passing the waste products in the dialyzing solution and you know the from the blood you can see the waste materials are passing into the dialyzing solution this is the right answer to pump purified blood back into the uh, body to pump purified blood back into the body of the patient but you know that uh, the semi permeable membrane is not for returning back the blood chance for asking this question my dear student and you know that's about the topics my dear students okay i hope it is clear and you know we completed almost 12 questions from the chapter life process okay so thank you so much my dear students and i'm going for a very very short break and after that you know my friend ashwin is waiting for a uh, discussing the topic acid bases and salts my dear student and there are lot of questions you can expect from the chapter acid bases and salts and he is ready to crack he is ready to solve some of the important questions my dear students okay just go and have a cup of tea my dear students and we will be back within 2 minutes thank you thank you all my dear students
Hello, good morning all and welcome back to the another live session of uh, our chemistry and today we are going to discuss some questions from the chapter acid bases and salts. As you know this chapter is very important you know the uh, only four chapters are there in chemistry right only four chapters are there in chemical reactions and equations and acid bases salts metals and non-metals and carbon and its compounds right. So you got carbon and compounds yesterday right. So this is the last day of preparation right tomorrow you are going to write your exam so all the best for you uh, first of all all the best for that exam and before that you have to know something uh, I mean some uh, knowledge from this chapter that is acid bases and salts right. So we can move on to the first question without wasting any time we can move on to the first question because you know we know that yes to, to, today is Friday right. So without wasting any time I move on to the first question that is name the acid present in tamarind and nettle sing okay what do you think what do you think this is for you guys this is for you guys i mean you can answer i'll be there i'll be there in in your life okay i'll be there in your life yes you can reply you can reply now yes please reply please reply which is the acid present which is the acid present in yes yes krishna is there gauri gopakumar is there faris is there i'll be Yes, yes, very good, very good. Tartaric acid, right? Yes, in tamarind, in tamarind, you can see that in tamarind, in tamarind, the acid present in tamarind is tartaric acid. Tartaric acid. Okay, tartaric acid. It is tartaric acid. It is nothing but, but it is tartaric acid. And what about the nettle sting? Nettle sting, nettle, you know that it's a plant, right? When you touch the nettle sting or when you touch the plant leaf, what will happen? The needle, the needle shaped hairs in the leaf, they will, yes, they will inject some acids in, in, on, into your skin, right? And which will bring some burning sensation. Okay, so what makes this burning sensation? That is the acid injected by the nettle sting. So which is the acid? Which is the acid injected by the nettle sting? What do you think? What do you think? Which will be the acid injected by the nettle sting? Yes, 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 Rita, Rita is there, methanoic acid, very good, Krishna is formic acid, right, is that methanoic acid or formic acid, what do you think, is that methanoic acid or formic, I, I, I got two different answers, that is methanoic acid, Rita said methanoic acid and Krishna uh, and Gauri is there uh, as a formic acid, so what do you think, what do you think, what do you think, is that methanoic acid or formic acid, what do you think, what do you think, Paris, what do you think, Yes, they are same. Yes, very good, very good. Yes, very good. That means methanoic acid, methanoic acid or formic acid, both are same. Formic acid, both are same. Because we studied carbon and its compounds, right? We studied the fourth chapter carbon and its compounds. And from that chapter, you know that both methanoic acid and formic acid are same. That is, they are HCOOH. They are having the formula HCOOH. Yes. So we studied, yes, carbon and its compounds. And now we know how can write IUPAC nomenclature. What is carboxylic group? You know that, right? So, we know that both methanoic acid and formic acid are same. Okay, so from nettle sting, it will be, the acid will be methanoic acid or formic acid. I'm asking another, another question. I mean, it is not there. So, I'm asking like, if it is and sting, what do you think? If it is an and sting, what will be the acid injected by the and sting? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Yes, 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 Jaden is there, yes, it is also methanoic acid, if it is and sting, I am writing a C there, if it is and sting, what will happen, if it is and sting, that is also, the acid injected by the and sting will be also methanoic acid or formic acid, don't worry. If you got any ant bite or you know if there are any nettle sting ir irritation or rashes in your skin, don't worry. P bring some uh, baking soda, rub it on your skin. You will definitely feel better. 
okay so uh, bring some uh, so, uh, sodium bicarbonate or baking soda rub it on your skin okay rub it on your skin what is happening there what is happening there sodium bicarbonate or baking soda you know that it is yes it is basic in nature it is basic in nature and what is injected in your skin it is acid so when you rub basic in your skin or baking soda on your skin what will happen yes very good neutralization will take place okay neutralization will take place so neutralization due to neutralization you will feel better because the acid injected by the nettle sting or the acid injected by the ant sting it will get neutralized it will get neutralized when you rub it with a sodium bicarbonate or baking soda okay now you got the solution also and what about the acid in tomato it's a previous question it's a frequently asked question many times it is asked what is the acid inside tomato anyone 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 tomato what do you think yes very good very good Jaden is there Shayan is there oxalic acid very good it is oxalic acid tomato if it is tomato it will be oxalic acid it will be oxalic acid oxalic acid so this session is for you guys okay i will not answer here you can answer because a, you can answer any question from this question and you are answering it very good very good everything you answered the uh, the acid present in tamarind is tartaric acid and the acid present in nettle string is formic acid and the acid present in ant string is also formic acid and the acid present in tomato is oxalic acid now it is clear right yes so so many questions from me can be asked as an objective question or one more question from this topic okay what are the acids present in each substance like in apple what is the acid present in apple do you know that what is the uh, uh, acid present in apple anyone you can reply anyone is anyone is there yes very good krishna is there malic acid that that is right malic acid okay malic acid that is right and you know the acid inside the uh, uh, i mean orange orange it will be citric acid right so that's the thing you have to remember and we can move on to the second question we can move on to the second question select a pair of olfactory indicators from the following you know what is in uh, indicators right you know what are indicators indicators are mainly they are yes they are indicating the nature of the substance whether it is acid or base it will be indicated by the indicators and there are several types of indicators like all factor indicators other right so and you know the litmus paper is there right and you know what is all factor indicators what is all factor indicators all factor indicators are substances which varies their smell in presence of acid or base if you are dissolving the olfactory indicators in acids or bases with respect to the acid or base they will they can vary the smell they can vary their smell onion is an example for that right and we out of the four, i mean from the following four options which will be the right answer what do you think which will be the right answer option a is clove oil and vanilla essence option b onion and turmeric and option c clove oil and litmus solution and option d vanilla and methyl orange what do you think is methyl orange an olfactory indicator no methyl orange is not an olfactory indicator is litmus solution is olfactory no it is not olfactory so option it is not option d it is not option c and what about turmeric turmeric is, is also not an olfactory indicators they are indicating the color right we can identify acids or bases in presence of color using turmeric using litmus solution using methyl orange we can identify it by using colors but if it is clove oil and vanilla essence if it is clove oil and vanilla essence if it is clove oil and vanilla essence what will happen yes you know that both clove oil and vanilla essence they are olfactory indicators what do you mean by olfactory indicators or what change this clove oil makes you know in presence of base 
in presence of base in presence of base it will lose its smell there will be no smell the smell vanishes the smell vanishes okay in presence of clove oil the smell vanishes or there will be no smell at all and you know that vanilla extract or the vanilla essence that you are using for preparing ice creams preparing cakes right it has some good flavor right vanilla essence also for biryani okay we are using vanilla essence and you know the smell right but in presence of in presence of acid there will be this smell but in presence of base what will happen in presence of base the smell of vanilla extract or vanilla essence that will vanish again it will vanish so there will be no smell at all okay by this way they are indicating the nature of the substance okay that they, in which they are they get dissolved okay so by uh, these are olfactory indicators so we studied two type of i mean uh, there are actually three olfactory indicators one is clove oil another is vanilla essence and the last one is onion also okay yes 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 everyone yes very good jayden option a yeah option is a is the correct answer rida is there shayan is there gauri is there yes yes very good yes and we are moving on to the third question okay third question we can make it easy you know this chapter is very easy if you are studying this chapter it will be very easy because only the thing you have to remember is there are some indicators from the first portion of this chapter there are some indicators right you have to identify i mean you know the chapter name right what is the chapter name acid bases and salts right as the name suggest the first portion is about acids and bases you have to identify it. what are acids what are bases their characteristics how can we identify it that is the first portion of this chapter okay and after this portion we will study the ph paper how can we value the uh, uh, i mean the acidic nature or basic nature that is indicated by ph paper there is ph paper there is universal indicator right yes that's it and after that we will study some yes we studied acids and bases and after that we will study some salts which are, which is including uh, uh, like bleaching powder is there plaster of paris is there sodium chloride is there yes is that right yes sodium carbonate is there sodium bicarbonate baking soda is there right yes and here we are discussing some of them i mean some of the questions from the these topics that can be expected for tomorrow's exam okay yes the third question this can be also expected for uh, tomorrow's exam maybe the question will not be given in the uh, and i mean the question paper okay if 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 this question is there uh, on tomorrow then maybe the question will not be given okay then what is the question why does dry hcl gas not change the color of the dry litmus paper it's a good question you know that hcl is an acid right hcl is an acid it's hydrogen chloride it is acidic in nature right but if it is dry hcl and if you are using some dry litmus paper normally you know that acids well uh, it will turn the blue litmus into red right blue litmus into red but here if you are using a dry litmus paper here i am using some dry litmus paper so what will happen here you can see that the reaction sodium chloride and uh, concentrated h2so4 is there okay and hcl will be produced and this hcl gas will yes hcl hcl gas is moving through this tube and if i am putting some dry litmus paper here what will happen what do you think what will happen if i am putting dry litmus paper what do you think nothing going to happen why it is so if you are using dry litmus paper what happened to hcl what happened to litmus paper what happened what do you think you know that right you know that litmus the color of litmus paper it will change it will change only in the presence of h plus ions if it is an acid it should have h plus ion if it is an acid it should have h plus ion 
or it should have H3O plus ion. This is hydrogen ion and this is hydronium ion. Okay, hydrogen ion and hydronium ion. Yes, no reaction in litmus paper. Yes, yes. Good, good. Yes, very good. So, if it is an acid, it should have H plus or H3O plus ion. But you know, if it is a dry HCl, what will happen? Dry HCl will not dissociate. Dry HCl will not dissociate. They will not form H plus ions. They will not form H plus ions. Then how can they change the color of litmus paper? How can it, the dry HCl can change? The color of litmus paper, it is not possible. Because if you want to change the color of litmus paper from blue color to red color, then you need H plus ions or H3O plus ions. Okay. But the fact is, but the fact is, the HCl or the acids, they will produce, mainly HCl, they will produce H plus ions only in presence of water only in presence of water you can see that the hcl the hcl in presence of water in presence of water only they will ionize to form h plus and cl minus and you know that these h plus ions these h plus ions they will turn the blue litmus into red color Okay, so the point you have to remember here is, if you are using a dry litmus paper, it is not wet, right? It is dry and dry HCl gas is coming, right? Dry HCl gas is coming and dry HCl gas will not produce H plus ions or H3O plus ions. Okay, so there will be no color change of litmus paper. But if, if it is wet litmus paper or if it is moist litmus paper, if it is moist litmus paper, what will happen? Since it is moist, there will be presence of H2O. There will be presence of water. Okay, and the presence of water makes the HCl gas to dissociate. And the HCl gas will dissociate to form H plus and Cl minus H plus and Cl minus. Understood? Understood, students? Yes, yes, very good, very good. Jaden, Ridha, Gauri is there, Shayan is there, Krishna is there. Everyone, understood? The dry HCl gas, they will dissociate to form H plus ions only in presence of water or moisture. Okay, so remember this point, remember this point, why does dry HCl gas not change the color of dry litmus paper? Why does it so? You know that if it is dry HCl and if it is dry litmus paper, what will happen? HCl will not dissociate to form H plus ions. Only H plus ions can uh, change the color of litmus paper. So if it is dry, there will be no H plus ions, there will be no H plus ions. Okay, so if there is no H plus ions, then what will happen? There will be no color. And if the litmus paper is moisture, moist or if it is wet, what will happen? There is some water in, uh, in the litmus paper. So in presence of water, what will happen? The dry HCl will dissociate in presence of the water in the litmus paper and they will dissociate to form H plus ions. And these H plus ions will bring some color change. You can see here. Here there is no color change. The blue litmus paper itself, it's blue, right? Even after the entering of HCl, it is blue. But here you can see that if it is moist litmus paper or wet litmus paper, the color changes from blue color to red color. That's it. Okay. I think you hope, hope you guys understood this. Yes, 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 yes. And we can move on to the Next question, which is uh, a question from universal indicator, universal indicator. You know that universal indicator or pH paper, right? What is the question? Here are some uh, results of solutions tested with universal indicator paper. You know that universal indicator paper. This is universal indicator paper. In universal indicator paper, you can or pH paper. This is pH paper. And you can see that in pH paper, there will be 
colors right there will be colors from red to blue okay red to blue there will be color color variation and you know that you know the ph ph scale right you know the ph scale what is the ph scale if the ph scale is from 0 to 14 the ph scale is from 0 to 14 and if it is you know if it if the ph value is 0 to 7 it will be acidic and if the ph value is 7 to 14 it will be basic very good basic it will be basic it will be basic it will be basic okay it will be basic yes 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 you know that abhijit abhijit kumar yes you are right you are right okay and if it is 7 if the ph value is 7 what do you think if the ph value is 7 it will be neutral it will be neutral it will be neutral it will be neutral okay it will be neutral okay it will be neutral that's it and we can move on to the uh, uh, question in the question you can see that here are some results of solution tested with universal indicator paper and there is sulfuric acid okay and so what is the color of sulfur i mean the indication of ph paper when you are using sulfuric acid the color of ph paper is red and you know that if it is red color if it is red color it is that much acidic in nature okay because you can see that if it is neutral it will be green in color you know the water the drinking water human blood they are approximately having a ph value 7 okay so it will be uh, indicating uh, a green color but you know if it is acidic the the colors will be red orange yellow like that okay so if it is alkali the colors will be like light blue dark blue violet purple is there right yes then we can move on to the next thing that is sulfuric acid it is red so you know that red means it is acidic it is acidic it is acidic it is acidic and what about metal polish it is dark blue right if it is dark blue then it will be basic in nature it will be basic in nature it will be basic in nature and what about li uh, washing liquid washing liquid washing liquid is indicated by yellow color the yellow color you know that the yellow color yellow color if it is yellow color it will be acidic in nature it will be acidic in nature it will be acidic in nature and what is milk of magnesia you know that milk of magnesia this can be asked milk of magnesia there is one more use of milk of magnesia is there what is milk of magnesia you know that milk of magnesia having light blue color you can see that if it is light blue in color if it is light blue in color it will be basic in nature it will be basic in nature it will be basic in nature and you know one use of milk of magnesia milk of magnesia you know that there are some gastric juice that is hydrochloric acid is produced in your stomach right for digestion for better digestion the stomach our, our stomach is producing hcl gas hydrochloric acid right and this hydrochloric acid will produce some excess amount of acidity if you are not having your food at proper time what will happen what will happen your acidity the acidity of stomach will increase acidity of stomach will increase so you feel more acidic i mean more acidic stomach you feel more acidity if you if you have any acidity you will have some and acids the medicines which are used for acidity for removing acidity is known as and acids milk of magnesia is one of them because milk of magnesia was used as and acids in earlier times okay and now also milk of magnesia can be used as an and acid but now you know nowadays we are using some modern medicals okay so you can see that in milk of magnesia can be used as an and acid which can be which is used to reduce the acidity in your stomach okay so that's an extra point from milk of magnesia and you know that it is basic in nature and oven cleaner oven cleaner oven cleaner is purple in color you know the, if it is purple in color it will be that much it will be that much 
yeah it will be that much basic in nature very good basic in nature and what about car battery acid the battery used in uh, vehicles automobiles you know the car battery acid it is pink in color you know it is pink if it is pink it will be acidic in nature it will be acidic in nature okay it will be acidic in nature that's it okay so that's it so now what is the question here what is the question here arrange the solutions in order of their increasing ph value starting with the uh, with the one with the lowest ph value you know my dear students it is not the question is not like identify which of the following are acidic or basic it is not like that you have to arrange you have to arrange these substances in their increasing or decreasing order of ph value that is that's that is going to be a big task for us right because you have to know you have to know the colors and their corresponding ph value you have to know the colors and their corresponding ph value okay so now we we have some colors right now we have some colors don't worry don't worry we can we can fix it we can fix it don't worry we can fix it okay don't worry we can fix it and i am starting with red color what do you think red color if it is red color the ph value will be the ph value will be if it is red color the ph will be either it will be zero or it will be one right so here if it is sulfuric acid the ph value will be one the ph value is one okay the ph value is one and if it is pink if it is pink the ph value will be three to four or if it is yellow please note it please note it if you don't know please note it okay please note it down if it is yellow it will be 5 to 6 you know it will be 5 to 6 okay and if it is light blue i'm writing in this order okay i'm writing in this order if it is light blue i'm not writing the green color you know that green color is indicating neutral value that is 7 and if it is light blue what do you think if it is light blue if it is light blue and there is also dark blue is there dark blue is there dark blue is there light blue is it will be 9 the ph value will be 9 and for dark blue the ph value will be 10 and for you know there is one more one more color is there that, that is purple color yes purple color is there purple color is there and for purple color the ph value will be 11 and now you know the colors of ph paper and their corresponding ph value right then you can arrange it now you can arrange it now you can arrange the following in the increasing order of ph values which is having least one which is having least ph value the red color is having least ph value which is a substance having red color it is nothing but it is sulfuric acid okay so i'm arranging it okay i'm arranging it okay we can arrange it it is sulfuric acid it is sulfuric acid sulfuric acid is having lesser ph value lesser ph value means more acidic it will be okay lesser ph value more acidic it will be and what is the next one pink color right it is having uh, 3 to 4 pH value 3 to 4 pH value so which substance is having pink color it is nothing but car battery acid right so I'm writing like car battery acid car battery acid car battery acid car battery acid okay car battery acid and next one next one it is yellow color yellow color is having pH value 5 to 6 right pH value 5 to 6 and which which substance is having ph value 5 to 6 yellow color yellow color yes it is nothing but it is washing liquid washing liquid then we can write it like washing liquid i'm writing here washing liquid washing liquid washing liquid okay washing liquid so guys if you feel difficulty uh, in your exams like from this topic ph uh, ph uh, i mean especially from the topic which is uh, having the universal indicator listen you can study the color and their corresponding ph value you know it will be very helpful if tomorrow's question is difficult if tomorrow's question asking from the universal indicator topic if it is difficult you can expect this question okay 
if if tomorrow's question from this universal indicator paper topic if it is difficult you can expect this question so for so, uh, solving this question you have only to remember the ph values and their corresponding colors that's it okay ph value and their corresponding colors okay then after washing liquid which is their light blue color light blue color which is having ph value 9 light blue light blue milk of magnesia so the next point will be milk of magnesia milk of magnesia can you see this can you see this yes very good milk of magnesia is there milk of magnesia is there very good milk of magnesia is there yes yes very good very good yes gauri you send it okay yes yes you send it correct okay okay then oh then what is next after light blue there is dark blue right dark blue dark blue it will be metal polish it will be metal polish it will be metal polish it now it is simple you can solve it purple what is, which is having purple oven cleaner the last point is oven cleaner that's it oven cleaner that's it so we studied we studied the topic you don't have to remember all the all the ph values you just remember these values if it is red it will be 1 if it is pink it will be 3 to 4 if it is yellow it will be 5 to 6 if it is green it will be 7 and if it is light blue the ph value will be 9 and if it is dark blue ph value will be 10 and if it is purple it will be 11 which is indicating the acidic and basic nature you can see some of exa so i mean some examples are there right the battery acid is there and stomach acid is there orange juice is there vinegar tomato and black coffee is there urine uh, water sea water you can see that baking soda is there you know that baking soda is uh, basic in nature right so it will be having ph value of 9 okay so the indi the a color indicated by uh, the P uh, ph paper will be light blue color you can see that light blue color and the, there is indigestion tablets and ammonia solution is there. soapy water is there soapy water you know that it is basic in nature so it has 12 ph value 12 and it is dark blue it is dark blue and purple color right yes bleach is there and drain cleaner is there so this is all about the universal indicator so maybe some students feel difficulty while solving the questions from ph paper but don't worry study this okay then we can move on to the next question what is the next one what is the next question this can be also expected for tomorrow's exam that is what do you observe from the above experimental setup that is below experimental here it is below experiment okay yes above experimental setup give a give reason for the observation give reason for the observation there are some observation i mean you have to uh, you have some observation from this experiment right you know this experiment what is this experiment actually in the experimental setup you can see that there is a beaker okay there is a beaker is there there is a beaker is there and we fill the beaker with some diluted hcl you can see this is diluted hcl okay and there is a rubber cork is there rubber cork and to this rubber cork we put two nails iron nails are there you can see that two iron nails are there okay and to this iron nails i'm uh, connecting some electrical wires you can see that there are some electrical wires right and these electrical wires are connected by a six voltage battery and there is a bulb and there is also a switch so when i put the switch on what do you think what do you think if it is dilute hcl what do you think will the bulb glow if it is dilute hcl if the solution is dilute HCl, when I put the switch on, when I put the switch on, what do you think? What do you think? Will the bulb glow or not? What do you think? Yes, I want your answers. It will glow. Abhijit Kumar, yes, very good. Very good. It will glow. Yes, Rida. It, a bulb will, uh, I mean, it will glow. Yes, yes, Jaden is there. In case of, they have already uh, answered it, right? They have already answered the all questions. Very good, very good students. Very good, very good, very good. I think you will, you will rock tomorrow, okay? I think you will definitely, you will rock tomorrow. You have to score 25 out of 25, okay? We have to score 25 out of 25. I will be there, we will be there, okay? Don't worry. 
I am here. Okay. So you can score 25 out of 25 in your chemistry exam. Okay. That much simple. So if you don't know the students, those who are having doubts in this uh, question or those, those who are not know this question, please, please listen. Please listen here. If you are mixing, if you are taking dilute HCl solution, you know that diluted, that means there will be water because it is diluted, right? So, you know, since it is diluted HCl, it will have H plus ions and Cl minus ions. H plus ions and Cl minus ion. And what do you think? What do you think? Will this uh, bulb glow? Yes, it will definitely glow. If the solution is HCl, the bulb will definitely glow. Because for glowing of this bulb, we need to complete the electrical circuit. We need to complete electrical circuit. And you know that, yes, the current is moving. Yes, the current is moving. You can see that the current is moving. Yes. And you can see that the circuit, the electrical circuit is incomplete here, right? In between these nails, it is incomplete. It is incomplete. So you know that. Remember, always remember. Current can be carried by two particles. Only two particles, you know. The current can be carried by only two particles. What are they? The first one is free electrons. Free electrons. Free electrons, they are free to move, so they can carry the electric current. Okay, that you will study, I think you studied it in your physics class, right? Current can be carried by free electrons. In metals, in metals, why metals are electrically conductive? They have free electrons, right? They have free electrons. So, in the, the free electrons, they will carry the electric current. They will carry the electric current through the metal. Okay. So, uh, the one is uh, a free electron. What is the second one? You know, not only the metals, not only the metals, but also some electrolytes. That are some solutions, right? Some electrolytes, they are also conducting electricity, right? They are also conducting electricity. Like, you know, NaCl is conducting electricity. Diluted HCl is conducting electricity. Why they are conducting electricity? Copper sulphate is conducting electricity. Zinc sulphate is conducting electricity. Why they are conducting electricity? Because they have ions in them. They have ions in them. You can see HCl. If it is HCl, they have ions. H plus ion is there. Cl minus ion is there. Okay. It's not a fixed ion. They can easily move. Ions can easily move in HCl, in uh, AgNO3, in CuSO4, in ZnSO4. They can easily move. So these ions will bring, these ions will bring the electric current. Yes, like this. You can see this. Now the electrical circuit is completed and the bulb will, they will glow. The bulb will glow. That's it. Simple. So we completed the question. There are two more options. That is, if it is HCl, it will conduct electricity because HCl has free ions in it. So it will conduct electricity and the bulb will glow. And if it is alcohol, what do you think if it is alcohol? Alcohol and glucose, remember. It is, there is no glucose, but I can add glucose. Because tomorrow's exam is having glucose, you know. Tomorrow's exam is having glucose. There will be glucose, there will be an option of glucose. So what do you think? What do you think guys? If it is glucose, I mean, I'm avoiding this alcohol. Okay, and I'm moving with, I mean, going with this glucose. What do you think? If it is glucose, if it is glucose inside the beaker, what do you think? Will it uh, uh, conduct? Yes. It will not conduct, it won't glow the glucose. Very good, very good, Jaden. Very good, Radha. Very good, uh, Krishna is there, Gauri. Very good, very good, very good. Ashwini is there. Yes, Manur is there, yeah, Manur, you finish, you finish your uh, revisions, yes, very good, very good, very good, okay, 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 yes, okay, yes, yes, Manur, yes, yes, sir, yes, very good, very good, Manur, that's what we need, right, we, we revise the metals and non-metals, we revise carbon and compounds, we revise chemical equation and only the left is, yes, it is acid, bases and salts. 
yes now when it is glucose you know that glucose will not dissociate guys glucose will not dissociate so if if does not dissociate then what will happen there will be no ions there will be no ions at all if it is glucose you know if it is glucose if it is alcohols if it is alcohols what will happen they will not dissociate they will not dissociate they will not dissociate guys they, they will not dissociate so if they will not dissociate there will be no ions at all there will be no ions at all there will be no ions if there are no ions then they will not conduct electricity they will not conduct electricity that's the point you have to remember so if it is a glucose if it is uh, 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 or alcohol the, they will not conduct electricity because glucose and alcohol they will not dissociate and the bulb will not glow okay and what about sodium hydroxide yes i need answers sodium hydroxide listen listen uh, gauri listen uh, i mean not only the h plus ions any ions i mean uh, not only the h plus ions can conduct electricity but any ions can conduct electricity okay any ions can conduct electricity but these are not making any ions okay they will not dissociate they will not make any ions you know copper sulfate they will conduct because they have cu2 plus and so for 2 minus cu2 plus and so for 2 minus there are some misconceptions like uh, uh, they will conduct electricity the electrolyte will conduct electricity only if there is h plus no it is wrong okay it is no it is uh, wrong because if 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 they can if they contain any of ions they will conduct electricity okay not only the h plus ion but also if there are any kind of ions they will conduct electricity okay now it is clear gauri right yes yes okay okay very good yeah then if it is sodium hydroxide you know sodium hydroxide naoh they will dissociate to form na plus and oh minus that's it na plus and oh minus na plus and oh minus now you can see that there are some ions right there are some ions from naoh sodium hydroxide so definitely the bulb will glow because NaOH will be Na plus is there, OH minus will be there if it is NaOH and the electrical circuit will complete and the bulb will glow. That's it. So definitely you can expect the question. You can note it. Okay, you can note it. Glucose will be there tomorrow. Okay, glucose will be there. Okay, and we are moving to the next question which is about water of crystallization very good question you know you can expect this question water of crystallization you know water of crystallization right you know i know copper sulfate will exist as cuso4 dot to 5 h2o you can see you can see here you can see from here copper sulfate it will be cuso4 dot to 5 h2o it will be cuso4 dot to 5 h2o that dot to 5 h2o is indicated by I mean, that is indicating water of crystallization. So, what do you mean by water of crystallization? Can you please give any, any other example? Yes. Jaden, yes. CUSO4.5H2O. Jaden, other than CUSO4, do you have any other examples? Do you have any other example other than CUSO4? Any other example? Can you please give any other examples? We have studied in the chapter. The same chapter, it is there. The same chapter it is. Yes, very good. Jaden, very good, very good. Na2CO3 dot 10 h 20 Very good. Na2. So some other examples. I'm also writing some other example. Na2CO3. Sodium carbonate. It will exist as decahydrate. What do you mean by decahydrate? There will be deca means yes, dec. D E C dec. We have studied it in the uh, carbonate compounds. I mean the nomenclature. Dec is indicating 10, right? So, decahydrate means there will be 10 H2O. Okay. So, sodium carbonate exists as Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. Any other? Any other answers? Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Jaden. Very good. Yes. CaSO4. CaSO4 dot 2 H2O which is indicating gypsum. If it is half H2O, it will be plaster of Paris. You know that. Plaster of Paris. Okay, so what is the question? We can move on to the question because we have to finish it. Okay, we have to finish it. 
uh, and what is mean by water of crystallization now you know what is mean by there will be some definition you know definition of water of crystallization can be asked definition what is the definition of water of crystallization it is you can see it is the fixed number of molecules it is the fixed number of water molecules okay present in a unit formula of a salt in a salt in a unit formula of salt the cuso4 cuso4 it is the one unit formula of cuso4 salt right so how many fixed number of molecules of h2o is there that is what is indicating water of crystallization so remember if you don't know you can note it what is water of crystallization it is the fixed number it is a fixed number of water molecules it is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit you can see one formula unit of a salt here the salt is copper sulfate okay so that's it so here the water of crystallization is in copper sulfate it will be 5 h2o in sodium carbonate it will be 10 h2o in uh, in gypsum it will be 2 h2o so what is water of crystallization it is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt okay then what is the next question what is the next question how do you show that blue copper sulfate solution contains water of crystallization you know that copper sulfate solution will be blue in color why it is blue in color or how do you show that copper sulfate solution contains water of crystallization how can we show that do one thing do one thing yes 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 Jaden. yes Jaden. we will discuss okay we will discuss the plaster of paris don't worry don't worry the next question you asked and i gave yes you asked Jade, you asked the question and i gave it yes this is the question this is the question of plaster of paris don't worry we will discuss okay don't worry we will discuss it okay don't worry we will discuss it yes and what about the copper sulfate you know that copper sulfate is blue in color right copper sulfate is blue in color you can see it you can see it in a china dish you can see that there are some blue crystals which is indicating copper sulfate solution and when you heat it heat it heat it when you heat it when you are heating it when you are heating it what will happen you know the cuso4 dot to 5h2o the cuso4 dot to 5h2o it will turns into cuso4 plus 5h2o plus 5h2o cuso4 will cuso4 dot to 5h2o will turns into when you heat it when you heat it it will turns into cuso4 plus 5h2o what is the difference between reactants and products in this reaction what is the difference here you can see that in copper i mean in reactants the 5h2o is in hydrated form what do you mean by hydrated form it is there as H2O with the one formula unit of the salt. You can see five H2O are there along with the one formula unit of the salt, right? And when you heat it, what will happen? You know, the five H2O, the five H2O from the one formula unit of copper sulfate, it is removed. You can see now it is not together. They are not together. We, we, yes, we separate them so painful right we separate them some, uh, some you know some relations are like that when you separate it yes there will be white in color okay so initially you can say that it is blue in color right blue in color when h2o is along with the copper sulfate the, they will have the copper sulfate will have blue color you know blue color the color of sky blue color but you know when you heat it what will happen the 5 h2o from copper sulfate they will get separated okay and now it is having white color okay that is the first thing you have to do when you want to show 
that blue sulfate blue copper sulfate solution contains water of crystallization when you want to show that then first thing you need to do is just heat the copper sulfate when you heat the copper sulfate the h2o got separated and the blue color will turns into white color okay then what is the second step what is the second step that you need to show that the second step is add some water add some water or moisture to this copper sulfate so if you are adding some uh, water i'm adding some water listen 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 guys i'm adding some water here i'm adding some h2o here you know i'm adding some h2o here so what will happen what will happen yes if you add some water add some water to it then again it will turns into blue so when you heat it when you heat it what will happen when you heat it the blue copper sulfate turns into white color because the water is removed the water molecule or the water of crystallization is removed you can see that is removed and when you add some water to the white powder that is the anhydrous copper sulfate anhydrous copper sulfate means copper sulfate without any water molecules okay so when you add water to it what will happen it will again turns into blue color i think it is clear right understood guys understood everything did you understand did you understand yes 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 that's it okay so if you want to show blue color copper sulfate contains water of crystallization then you have to do two steps what are the two steps the first step is you have to heat it heat it blue crystals you have to heat it and when you heat it it will lose its, its uh, water of crystallization and it will uh, turns into white color and again you add some water to the white powder then it will again it will uh, i mean it it will return to the blue color that's it simple and we are moving to the next question yes this is your question this is your question that is you you asked me about the plaster of paris right this is your question you asked me about the gypsum right this is your question then what is the question a white powder is used by doctors there are two white powders in acid base and salt mainly mainly what are they one is bleaching powder don't worry guys don't worry it is also there it is also there yeah this is the question from the bleaching powder we discussed and the, it is there bleaching powder the question don't worry okay don't worry we will discuss the bleaching powder and here the white powder used by doctors if it is used by doctors it will be of course it will be it will be plaster of paris okay so what is plaster of paris or uh, how can we prepare it how can we prepare it that is what is we are going to discuss and what is the first question write the name the first question write the name and chemical formula of the powder okay write the name we can name it simple right we can name it easily we can name it what is the name of uh, uh, i mean the white powder used by the doctors for support fractured bonds for supporting the fractured bonds what is the powder it is nothing but it is plaster of paris plaster of paris okay it is nothing but it is plaster of paris and the chemical formula of the powder you have to write the chemical formula i don't know the chemical formula i don't know you know i don't know the chemical formula you have to send me you have to send me please send me the chemical formula of plaster of paris yes jaden yes jaden is there yes jaden is there as usual jaden is there with the formula caso4 dot half h2o very good jaden very good very good caso4 dot half h2o you are good you are good you are a good fellow because you send it correctly yes rida is there yes gauri is there caso4 dot half h2o that is very good and what is the second question explain how this white powder is prepared you know you have to know how this plaster of paris is prepared so how this this been prepared you know you can prepare it from gypsum gypsum you know the gypsum gypsum you know the gypsum it is used in the preparation of cement also 
you know the gypsum it is having yes it is having the formula caso4 dot 2H2O. You know the difference between plaster of Paris and gypsum? Only one and a half H2O difference. You know, for plaster of Paris, the formula is CaSO4 dot half H2O. And for gypsum, it will be CaSO4 dot 2H2O. The difference between plaster of Paris and gypsum will be only half H2O. That is the significance of water of crystallization. You can see there is only change in water of crystallization. That is the significance of water of crystallization. If water of crystallization changes, then the substance itself will change. Okay. Yes. Then how can we prepare? Heat it. Guys, you heat it. Heat it at 373 Kelvin. That is 100 degrees Celsius. Heat it. Then you will, you know, this 2H2O, it will get removed and you will form CaSO4 dot half H2O plus 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 one and a half h2o will be removed so you know when you heat listen guys when you heat gypsum at 373 kelvin you know the half one and a half h2o will be removed and you will get plaster of paris pop plaster of paris okay and write the balanced chemical equation for the change yeah this is the balanced chemical equation this is, this is the balance of chemical equation. We have already done it. Right? So, what is this, guys? What is the white powder used for the doctors? Used, used by doctors for supporting the fractured bone? It is nothing but it is plaster of Paris. It is plaster of Paris. It is nothing but it is plaster of Paris. Okay. And what is the formula of plaster of Paris? It is nothing but CaSO4 dot half H2O. CaSO4 dot half H2O. That's it. Okay, so we finish. We can move on to the next question, which is during electrolysis of brine, a gas G is liberated at anode. Electrolysis of brine. Have you heard about this? Electrolysis of brine solution. Brine solution means it will be NaCl solution. Concentrated NaCl solution, right? So, electrolysis of brine solution. What is that? Electrolysis of brine solution. Can you please give me the name of process? Name of process of electrolysis of brine solution. Please send me. Send me the answer. The process of electrolysis of brine solution. Send me. Send me the answer. Where is Zayden? Where is Gauri? Where is Rida? Send me the name of process. Send me the name of process. Name of process. Name of process, process. Name of process, the electrolysis of brine solution. You know, it is very important, guys. Very important, very important. You don't have to miss it. Okay, you don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Yes, very good. Finally, Rita. Rita got the answer. Chlor alkali. It is chlor alkali process. 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 Very important, guys. Very important. You have to study it. You have to study it. It must be asked for tomorrow's exam. Chlor alkali process. You have to explain it. You have to give reactions of chlor alkali process. So, what is chlor alkali process? What is chlor alkali process? We don't have enough time, but I'm just writing it like you know, in chlor alkali process, you will be having yes. You will be having a chamber like this, chamber like this and in the chamber you can see some uh, NaCl solution that is brine solution will be there and some electrodes will be there, electrodes will be there, anode and cathode will be there, anode and cathode will be there and to this anode we will connect some battery, okay we will connect some battery, okay and you can see there will be a separating chamber will be there and what will happen what do you think what will happen guys what will, what will happen what do you think you know when electricity is applied this anode towards this anode is if it is anode in this anode chlorine gas will be liberated chlorine gas will be liberated this is anodic part this is anodic chamber right so chlorine will be liberated and you know at cathode at cathode at cathodic part at cathode what will happen? Hydrogen will be liberated. 
hydrogen will be liberated so in in anode in the part of anode chlorine will be liberated and in the part of cathode hydrogen will be liberated but you know guys not only chlorine but uh, i mean and hydrogen but also NaOH sodium hydroxide is formed sodium hydroxide is formed along with it. this is brine solution this is brine solution this is brine solution and you know you will get you will get NaOH you will get definitely listen listen this is very important point you will get NaOH sodium hydroxide in the cathodic side that is important you know you will get it in the cathodic side I mean the cathodic chamber side in the side of cathode nearer to cathode okay so this is actually chloralkali process we don't have any time i mean enough time so i'm just uh, uh, i mean uh, giving the outline okay outline of the chloralkali process you can see when brine solution is undergoing electrolysis you are when you are applying electricity to the brine solution what will happen at anode chlorine gas will be liberated and at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated and along with chlorine and hydrogen sodium hydroxide which is a base or alkali it will be formed okay so what are the reactions what are the reaction taking place here you can see 2 NaCl plus 2 H2O this is brine solution this is what is brine solution they will dissociate to form 2 NaOH 2 NaOH and 2 NaOH and they will form chlorine and H2O that's it simple this will be the balanced chemical equation that can be asked yes it is asked state the chemical equation involved we finish it we finish it we already finish it okay that's it now you can solve this during electrolysis of brine a gas g is liberated at anode what will be the anode the gas liberated at anode it will be chlorine it is not hydrogen guys it is not hydrogen it will be chlorine that's it okay and when this gas g is passed through slaked lime a compound c is formed what will be that compound c but before that you know guys there will be question if uh, any question from chlor alkali process is asked a question will be like this you can expect like uh, why it is uh, named as chlor alkali process why it is so why the name chlor alkali now you know right now you know why the name chlor alkali is there chlor means chlorine chlorine is produced right chlorine is produced during the process and alkali means it is not hydrogen it is NaOH so this is this is chlor and this is alkali that's why the uh, process is named as chlor alkali process finish we finish it we finish it we are moving on to the last question guys we are moving on to the last question but before that you know one more question is there when the G I mean when the gas G is passed through the slaked lime a compound C is formed you know we can write it like this I mean, uh, yes I'm raising it okay yes when compound G you know the compound G it is chlorine I mean the gas G will be chlorine is passed through slaked lime what is the formula of slaked lime what is the formula of slaked lime can you please give me the formula of slaked lime slaked lime please send me the slaked lime formula of slaked lime send me it send me what is the uh, formula of slaked lime it will be caoh twice 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 okay it will be caoh twice okay so what will happen what will happen when chlorine gas is passed through slaked lime what will happen they will form caocl2 plus h2o caocl2 plus h2o and what is caocl2 guys listen what is caocl2 what is caocl2 it is c which is used for disinfecting drinking water disinfecting drinking water we are using here we are using here in this uh, institute also using this material what is that what is that compound c it is nothing but it is bleaching powder you know for purifying water you need bleaching powder it will disinfectant it is a disinfectant 
it will kill the germs in the water in the drinking water so you can use bleaching powder now you finish the bleaching powder topic also so guys how can we prepare bleaching powder how can we prepare bleaching powder just pass the chlorine gas through the slaked lime or calcium hydroxide this is slaked lime or you can call it as calcium hydroxide okay so simple we finish it okay and moving on to the last question last question guys last question this is the last question last question is there last question is there yes fill the missing data in the following table fill the missing data in the following table yes who is there yes yes jaden yes listen listen you have to remember yes very good question yes very good question that is you have to remember the formula of bleaching powder and the formula of gypsum formula of plaster of paris this can be asked guys this can be asked we have discussed it what is the formula of gypsum caso4 dot 2h2o what is the formula of plaster of paris it is caso4 dot half h2o and what is the formula of yes bleaching powder it is caos yes listen it is nothing but it is cao cl2 it is nothing but cao cl2 that is bleaching water okay very good then we can move on to the last question which is uh, a question in which you have to predict the parent at parent acids and bases you know the neutralization reaction right what is neutralization reaction when acids and bases when they combine it will undergo neutralization and they will form some salts right and they will form some salts okay they will form some salts and here you can see salts are given salt is given ammonium chloride is there copper chloride is there i mean copper sulfate actually it is copper sulfate okay copper sulfate is there and sodium chloride is there magnesium nitrate is there right then you have to predict or you have to find which are the parent acids and bases how can we predict it how can we predict it can anyone say that how can we predict it say for example i'm taking ammonium chloride okay i'm taking the first thing uh, which is ammonium chloride i'm taking ammonium chloride nh4cl nh4cl ammonium chloride and how can we predict it there is a trick right you know that trick what is that trick you know that there will be a positive ion cation and negative ion anion what is positive ion here it is nothing but nh4 plus nh4 plus guys nh4 plus and there is a negative ion which is cl minus cl minus right cl minus and if you want if you want the parent parent acid and parent base just add h2o to it add some h2o i mean you know that h2o will form h plus and o h minus right they will form h plus and o h minus then now you got the parent acid and parent base how can we find parent acid how can we find parent acid you know try h plus and cl minus the negative ion the negative ion will form parent acid and the positive ion always they will form parent base okay parent acid and parent base and you know guys the negative ions they will combine with the h plus of h2o and they will form when you when h plus and cl minus combine they will form hcl so you got the parent acid simple simple and you know the the cation the positive ion cation when they combine with oh minus when they combine with oh minus they will form nh4oh which is our parent base which is our parent base that's it simple now you got the trick right now you can predict any parent acid or any parent base for any salt right so we can move on to the next one copper sulfate yes copper sulfate what do you think guys copper sulfate use the same trick use the same trick send me the answer okay use the same trick send me the answer yes there will be cu2 plus yes 
Who is there? Yes, Gauri is sending the answer. Jayden is sending the answer. Ritha is sending the answer. Very good. Very good, guys. Yes, SO42 minus is there. SO42 minus is there. As I told you, you know, as I told you, cations they will form, cations they will form base. And anions they will form acids. They will, they will form parent acids. They will give the parent acids. And if you want to find the parent atoms, I mean the parent acids and parent base, add H2 or don't worry guys, add H2 or Okay, H2O will contain H plus and OH minus, right? H plus and OH minus, right? Then, what can we do? What can we do? Yes, combine H plus and SO42 minus. You know that this SO42 minus is anion. They are forming parent acid. Then when H plus and SO42 minus combine, they will form H2SO4. You know the H2SO4, king of chemicals. What is king of chemicals? It is nothing but H2SO4, which is our sulfuric acid. Okay, so the parent acid is, parent acid is H2SO4. And what will be the parent base, guys? What will be the parent, uh, par parent base? It will be Cu2 plus, Cu2 plus and OH minus. They will combine. So, they will form Cu OH twice. So, there will be doubts, sir. How it is OH twice is there? How OH twice is there? You have studied in your 9th standard, guys. 9th standard. How can we write the chemical formula of a compound you can you can yes if you if you have any doubts listen here cu2 plus and oh minus is there right valency cu2 plus the valency is 2 oh minus the valency is 1 right just interchange so you will get cu oh twice that's how i got cu oh twice okay simple simple and the last one last one last one Sodium chloride, you know the sodium chloride, you know, we don't have to, I mean, you know, waste your time, you know, I know you know the sodium chloride, what are the parent acid and parent base of sodium chloride, send me, send me first, yes, very good, very good, it will be HCl, parent acid will be HCl and parent base will be NaOH, how we got this? You know that NaCl will be split into Na plus and Cl minus. When you add H plus and OH minus, what do you get? H plus and Cl minus. When they combine HCl, they will form HCl. Na plus and OH minus. When they combine, they will form NaOH. Finish. Finish. Simple. And the last one. Last one. MgNO3 twice. I am writing the last one. MgNO3 twice. MgNO3 twice. MgNO3 twice. MgNO3 twice. MgNO3 twice. And you know, from MgNO3 twice, there will be Mg2 plus and NO3 2 minus, right? Mg2 plus and NO3 minus. NO3 minus will be there. NO3 minus will be there. And when you add H2O to it, what will happen? H2O, I'm adding H2O. H2O means H plus and OH minus. So, Mg2 plus and OH minus, when they combine, what they will form? P of base, I mean parent base. What will be the parent base? Mg2 plus and OH minus. Guys, it is Mg OH twice. Mg OH twice. And what will be the parent acid? What will be the parent acid? H plus and HNO, NO3 minus campaign. They will form HNO3. Simple HNO3. That is our parent acid. That is nitric acid. Simple. That's it. So you finish your acid bases and salts chapter. You know, guys, you finish it. I know this is yesterday. I mean, the uh, tomorrow is your uh, exam, right? So, this uh, only few hours are left. Only few hours are left. And even though you attended my session, right? You attended my live session. So, I have, I have some, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, responsibility with you guys. So, guys, remember these questions and definitely they will, uh, I mean, it will be there in your tomorrow's exam. Okay, so uh, be confident and you can score 25 out of 25. Please score 25 out of 25 because you can you can score it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, 100% sure you can score it. Okay, so study it, study the four chapters and if you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay, you can ask and uh, 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 I mean study it and be confident, be cool and uh, 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 write the tomorrow's exam. Okay. Anyway, thank you, thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.